Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure I'd like to show you this book, tell you it's $18 and head for the door, but there are two armed guards right there, and they're not going to let me out of that easily. We're confident once the report is out and digested by the public that this will be the final word on the Roswell incident. <laughs> the conclusion of the first report left no doubt that what was recovered near Roswell, New Mexico in July 1947 was debris from a formerly top secret Army Air Forces research project codenamed Mogul. Today we're releasing the final report to address questions about alleged bodies associated with the Roswell story. If you have your books, turn to page three. We'll have a lesson. Bodies observed in the New Mexico desert were probably test dummies that were carried aloft by U.S. Air Force high-altitude balloons for scientific research. Claims of bodies at the Roswell Army Airfield Hospital were most likely a combination of two separate incidents. One was a 1956 KC-97 aircraft accident in which 11 Air Force members lost their lives, or a 1959 manned balloon mishap in which two Air Force pilots were injured. That information is in this report. Colonel, how do you square uh, the UFO enthusiasts saying that uh, they're talking about 1947 well, you're talking about dummies used in the uh, in the 50s, almost a decade later. Well, I'm afraid that's the problem that we have with time compression. I don't know what they saw in 47, but I'm quite sure it probably was Project Mogul. But I think if you find that people talk about things over a period of time, they begin to lose exactly when the date was. And there were lots of dummies dropped. There were 20, about 2,500 balloons launched during this 30-year period in New Mexico alone. Yes, ma'am. Let me just clear up two things that you sort of brushed over quickly. Number one was the time frame that people are, people are going to say, but this is 10 years. How could they possibly make a mistake on the 10 years? And number two, uh, you said it was never classified, and yet why didn't people at the time say, well, my goodness, we were having dummy tests. This explains the answer. Well, the dummy test, actually, uh, you need to get the book. Actually, you need to look in here. If you, if you look in here, you'll find there are a couple of things in which the dummy tests get lots of uh, media attention. Um, and um, I should ha I have it tabbed, and I should be able to find it, but quite frankly, I'm sitting here and my knees are shaking. 26, sir. But, uh, but 20, page 26. Yes, and, explain those two things. <laughs> okay, there's your picture for that. But let me tell you that I don't know why they can't, associate that time period. I'm sorry, I just don't have any information for that. All I know is what the Air Force did, and that if you, you overlay much of their claims and you look at the Air Force scientific research, you can see it's obvious that what we're talking about at Roswell, and I don't mean Roswell in 47, because that was Project Mogul. That was unmanned. I want to make that very clear. And that's the first report. But over that period of time, dummies were dropped all around there. And I think it's logical to, th to assume that the people there saw Air Force ambulances come out, they saw gurneys come out, they saw body bags come out because the dummies were put into body bags to protect them, they saw people in pith helmets, they saw people in shorts out there brushing the bushes looking for the remnants of the balloons, and when you put all that stuff together and spin it, you find that it fits perfectly with many of the, the occurrences in Roswell during that era. They Except also, they also said early. that these figures were of a much smaller stature than, than full-size adult figures. How do you reconcile that? I don't reconcile that. I just have no idea why they say that. Can you help us with when the dummies were first used? What year? 53. And how many, you say, numbers? Of well, the actual balloon uh, launchings were about 2,500. The actual number of dummies dropped were... Uh, it's actually in the book, and it's very specific, but I just, the number just escapes me. It's, it's more than, uh, than three or 400. So yes, sir. Why did they make it a dirty giant resemble to flying saucer? It makes it very suspicious. <laughs> the flying saucer? Now, you were talking about in the video. Yeah. Uh, that's also in here, I might add, and you saw it in the uh, video. Uh, some of the, uh, and you're looking at payloads. Well, what they were doing is they wanted to recover these payloads and so they were testing the parachutes. And I, I totally agree. If I saw something like that, I'm riding along out there near Rue Dilso, and I'm wandering out in the desert, and I see this funny-looking dish out there. 
I might want to poke around at it, but quite frankly, this is probably what it was. You keep saying using the word probably, and you say case closed. Those two don't jive. Yeah, How do right. you reconcile okay, that? Okay, let me say, from the Air Force perspective, that's exactly what it was. Sir, does the Air Force... And, and I don't mean to be rude about that. I want you to understand we are very, very proud of this report. We think uh, in our office that this answers lots of questions, and it answers them logically and with integrity. And one other thing I might add is if you want to do your own research, in the back is a complete technical report, uh, bibliography, and also there is a terrific, terrific set of endnotes. And I recommend that if you're interested in this, that you take these and you do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Colonel, let me just go back one more time. That You say this is case closed and people should now believe it. But it, with the major hole, though, of you're saying that they're wrong about the date and the date being six years' time that they're wrong about, how can you, what explanation can you give them other than just saying, well, we just think they're just mistaken by six years? Ma'am, I have no other explanation. I'm sorry. I just I have no other explanation. I'm looking at the facts as we have studied them, and I have no other explanation for that but what I've already given. But how would yes, that sir. make it case closed? Because we've reviewed all the relevant information, and we have finished this, and we're not going to revisit it. And, in fact, it's all unclassified. You have an opportunity on your own behalf. I recommend you get the report, start digging in, get on the web, see what you can find out. Yes, sir. Is it possible that the Air Force could have missed something in its investigation? In other words, is it possible that there are unidentified flying objects, that there are extraterrestrial visits, and the Air Force simply has not found it or been able to detect it? We have researched the Air Force projects and the Air Force information for these year groups. We have nothing else to say about them. You know, we, we don't believe there's anything else. I don't think... I have no way of even vaguely believing there's anything else. I promised a gentleman right back here a question, sir, the, in the... Yes, sir. Well, about uh, 50 years ago today, a um, Air Force pilot spied a big array of, of uh, saucers uh, supposedly flying over Washington State. That may have started all this. Um, does the uh, Air Force think it will never again investigate uh, these uh, reports? Is uh, Project Blue Book was the end and that's it? You know, I... I I don't ever want to speak for the Air Force about never again, but it's my opinion that they will not. One more question. Do you, uh, do you believe in UFOs? First one, no, sir. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Ma'am, I have no reason to believe that they're real. Thank you, very much. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry? You're talking test facilities other than continental United States? Yes. Research test facilities? Yes, research test facilities. We'll have to get back to you in a minute.